Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails, uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out free to sign up check it out i'm out of here hello everybody dr rick wallace dropping in on you with some exciting news uh, i told you um, a couple of weeks ago about uh, what dr blanchard and i are going to be doing on saturdays at 9 a.m central time central standard time uh new uh platform entitled the teachers uh, I'm excited about that. Told you we're bringing back the Black Voice Reloaded with Michael Jordan and myself. Uh, I am enjoying some of the time that I'm getting to work with other people uh, and share voices, opinions, uh, and strategies simultaneously. Uh, some people have weighed in uh, after watching uh, the work, uh, the recent dialogue I had with. Uh, Dr. Cleo Monago and uh, filmmaker Tony Lindsay about the uh, black codependency on whiteness and uh, a couple of people commented and said it was great to see me inviting other people on actually I was invited onto somebody else's platform and uh, I was given rights to share it on mine uh, it's something I've always wanted to do I am very careful about who I do connect and work with um, because I believe affiliation has a great deal to say about where you at, what you do, and there's just so much to it. But I'm looking, I'm excited about those things. This segment uh, that we're about to enter into is going to be a new segment to, segment too, and it's going to be called Blazing Heat. And the Blazing Heat is going to be a little bit lighter uh, than what you normally get from me. It's going to be a little bit more focused, but I am who I am, so I'm going to always talk from a place of growth, a place of positivity, a, a, a demand on accountability, but I'm going to deal with some of the lighter topics, some of the lighter subjects, some of the things that people get all excited about, uh, but the way you're going to know what, what's coming is by the label. Uh, the black voice is going to be all the hot stuff coming from uh, two people who are best friends for a while. Uh, one used to be a mentor of me, the other his mentee, Mike, and now we've developed this unbelievable bond as friends and family. Literally, I'm at his family's house, his mom and his dad, man. Uh, his dad married me and Marion. Uh, and so we said, you know, we hang out, we kick it, we, we're family now. But uh, we talk and we go at things like brothers discussing things, one learning from the other, one being challenged by the other, and it's great. Uh, Dr. Blanchard and I are gonna come from more of a studied position and an evaluation of the ancestors and the old brains of old and what we can bring to the table now, that type of thing. But Blazing Heat's gonna be all this other stuff. So this is the first episode of Blazing Heat and Blazing Heat is gonna be brought to you by Inbox Dollars. If you're looking for some quick, uh, a quick way to make some extra funds or to supplement your income, if you're willing to put in the work and energy, Inbox Dollars is a great place. It helped me tremendously some years ago. Man, I can't believe it's been that long uh, when I ran into a major hiccup in my life and I needed to reestablish myself. Uh, Inbox Dollars was one of the ways that I held myself together while I recovered. Uh, also, uh, the next one is uh, Living Green Supreme Foods. Uh, super greens have an unbelievable capacity to provide you what you need to remain healthy, especially when it comes to antioxidants. However, trying to eat enough through your regular diet can be unbelievably challenging. Uh, 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 Living Green Supreme Foods is an opportunity for you to supplement that and get everything you need for your daily nutritional value uh, in that area. Uh, the links are going to be in the box to go check it out. Uh, thank you to both of those entities for partnering. And now, talk about the topic at hand. Oh, almost forgot. Don't forget, I'm in the process now of writing book number 25. Uh, it's, it's an unbelievable 
uh, it's been an unbelievable journey, something I'm extremely proud of to sit up and say that I have put in work, I have followed my passion, I have done what I love at a level that allows me to say that I have written and published uh, 24 books and am in the current uh, process of writing book number 25. Uh, this book is going to be special, not only because it's book number 25, but because of the topic, uh, Chasing the Ghost, the Quest for Black Wealth. And what I'm doing now uh, is something special, never dated before, but I'm allowing people to sponsor space in the book so that they can pay tribute to the people who have made a difference in their life or pay tribute to something that they've done themselves that they're proud of. Uh, there's no minimum sponsorship, so everybody can participate. Uh, check out the link in the box and do what you feel you want on that level. There are so many different levels that you can do it on that allows you to do different things. Check all that out. Now, to the, to, 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 to the blazing heat. Uh, if you, unless you've been under a rock, you've been hearing all on social media, it's been, it's been buzzing that uh, vocalist Kelly Price, who is one of my favorite all time, uh, as far as vocalists are concerned, uh, uh, contracted COVID somewhere in the end of July, I think July 28th, and she went on and announced that she had it, but she was doing okay, and then eventually she had to check into the hospital. She was treated and released, and from that point, nobody knows where she was. And so we were getting a story and we were getting considerably concerned, especially with so many people coming up missing, so many people dying early, uh, so many things happening. There's a lot going on. And, uh, and then a lot of people are on an emotional high anyway, in a negative way, because uh, a lot of us are being triggered, triggered by the media and the fear mongering going on. So uh, this just adds to it. It's like a stoke, uh, a fire being stoked that's literally burning uh, destructively and destroying everything in its past and is, and is being stoked uh, by those who want to see it burn and then we are the consumers of the smoke and so you got to be able to understand uh, a lot was going on so a lot of people were concerned you know my wife and I said man wow I hope I hope she's all right and for me to come from that industry she, I've never met her which is shocking because a lot of the people out there I've met, at least I've come across them and, and stood face to face with them, shook their hand, gave them a hug or whatever, but I never met Kelly. Um, but like I said, she's one of my top, she's definitely in my top five vocalists of all time. Um, you know, uh, everybody's got their own, but you know, coming from the background I came from with nothing but a family of singers, a brother who's, who's a gospel artist now, uh, just, I appreciate her. I just put it that way. So when I heard about it, it was like, oh, man, I hope everything's okay, uh, okay with her. Sent up a quick prayer. And then I had to trust that everything's going to be okay. But the thing, it just kept buzzing. It just kept buzzing. And then um, I started to look into it. And people were saying, well, what do you think? I'm like, man, it's not nothing for me to get on, on air about and talk about. I mean, that's a personal thing. I hope her family finds her. But, you know, it is what it is. But the more I began to look into it, I began to see some patterns and some things that probably need to be discussed and so i'm checking it out but then it gets real funky right all right her her, her attorney comes out and says that she has requested uh that you give her some time she's just trying to heal she is okay and she's not under duress okay that's coming from her attorney so at that point i said i said okay from what I understand, did some more work, she communicates a lot through her attorney, especially when it comes to her family and other people who she hasn't been dealing with. Now, the family is making it seem like it's not like her if we haven't heard from her by the time it's not like her, come to find out that she hasn't spoken to the sister who's making the riffle since her mom died. So that's this long uh, dead thing. Now, now, now granted, under normal circumstances, this is something that people will be dealing with in the privacy of their lives, but when you become a celebrity, everything becomes everybody's business. And I think a lot of what Kelly is doing is trying to keep people out of her business. People like me who are sitting up talking right now about what's going on in her life. And uh, I do apologize for it, but it, it's a teaching moment. I don't want to get off into the personal things that are happening in her life at the level that some people have done, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, uh, Nikki Gilbert and DeBrat beefing about discussing this and all this, but I think DeBrat has more issue with something Nikki said 
that sort of kind of disappeared off social media for people could actually uh, screenshot it. But who knows? I'm pretty sure somebody probably got it. But that 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 kind of stuff is, isn't where this discussion needs to be. The discussion uh, needs to be on uh, mental health, mental safety, uh, mental peace, self-care. Let me tell you something. Some of the most toxic people in the world are people who are your, the part of your inherited circle, the people you were born into proximity to, the people that we call family, but don't act like family, which is the vast majority. Everybody has this sense of entitlement, especially when dealing with the person who has made a success of themselves. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to feel like, you know, you're really just around me because. I know what it feels like to feel like somebody feels because they wear the title of a certain relation to you that you owe them something. And when you when they don't get it, they go on the offensive. Uh, we saw it with Kirk Franklin's son. We saw it uh, we, uh, with a couple other things that happened this year that I'm not drawing attention, but I remember it going down. Uh, we tend to get put on blast. Oh, yeah. We see it with Dr. Dre's daughter. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on outside of that. But at the same time, that's not where that should play out. That should not play out in the public in order to shame somebody. If somebody has the character to do what's right, they're going to do it. Right, do what's right. Uh, putting the family business out doesn't help the situation. It probably harms it more than ever. Uh, I think that's a character issue. I think, as far as Dr. Dre is concerned, I think that was a character issue. I think it was a lot. But at the same time, at some point, you have to own your life. You have to own the responsibility for taking care of yourself. No matter how shitty your parents were, at some particular point, life is going to tell you it doesn't give a damn about who your parents were. What are you going to do? And if you don't do something about it, you're just going to continually deep, uh, sink deeper while blaming someone else when the truth is, no matter what your parents did to you, if you decide to pull yourself out of it, you will. I married a a wife who was born in a household where her father was an alcoholic and extremely abusive. Darren near killed her mom. I can tell you all this because she wrote it in her book. She lectures about it. I'm not sharing nothing that she doesn't share with the masses on a regular basis, but was abusive to them, was uh, abusive to her, uh, was abusive right to the day. She doesn't talk to him today because he's still an alcoholic in his mid to late 70s. Okay, but she decided that she wasn't going to be the victim. Now, her brothers weren't so lucky. They're still suffering from that. They didn't let it go. They didn't know how to master it. And life doesn't care. Life will kick their behinds until they decide they're no longer going to allow what their dad did to handle them. Now, give me. I deal with people. This is what I do for a living. I know the burden. I know the weight. I know the emotional trauma. I know the uh, physiological damage that that trauma is doing. I know all of that more than the average person by a long stretch. But at the end of the day, it still isn't going to matter. You're going to have to sit up and say, I'm not going to allow this to be the determining factor of the outcome of my life. And then you got to do something about it. That's what Marion did. Marion uh, did her work. Part of her work was actually coming to me and working with me. And then after she went on her way while working with her, I looked at it and said, this is my wife. I'm going to work with her, send her on her way. But this is my wife. At some point, I'm going to find her. And she came back around a year later. And I didn't let her leave again. But it started with her putting in her work. Putting in her work actually brought her across the person she was meant to be with. That's how powerful being in the space you're supposed to be in is. Now let's get back to this. How does this apply to what, I'm, what we're talking about now? It applies immensely. Number one is, there's this talk about the fact that uh, everybody's concerned because Kelly's boyfriend is extremely controlling. And there are people who say that, you know, he probably is. Well, from what I can tell, based off of a relationship with the previous husband, again, you got to be kind of educated what you're talking about, or are you just speculating? And still, I'm trying to do everything I can to spec, not to speculate, but based off of what that I can gather, that seems to be a proclivity to gravitate towards controlling men. Now, why that is, I'm not going to speculate on. Hadn't had a chance to sit down and talk with Kelly. Hasn't had, haven't had a chance to be exposed enough for her life to see what what leads to that. But it does seem to be a pattern. Patterns aren't uh, accidents. Patterns aren't coincidence. Patterns are a reflection of one's thinking, one's perspective on life, one's paradigms. So if there's a pattern of behavior, that's something that caught is behind the pattern. So it's there. But at the same time, I don't think 
this controlling person is the issue. Because we're talking about something that, that has uh, gone on long before that. But what we need to understand here is if family would be in a place and nurtured in a way where there was open communication and there was trust within the family nucleus, then there would be an open line of communication and there wouldn't be a concern about health and welfare and someone could actually step up and voice their concerns about this controlling person and what they may be doing. But because there's no trust, that's literally this place that she sunk into and gone back into because that's the only place she can find peace. Can't trust family. Doesn't want to really be controlled. And so I'm going to sink back. Now, as far as this whole bull crap with Brat and Nikki Gilbert, everybody knows who the Brat is. Uh, some of you may not know who Nikki Gilbert is. Nikki Gilbert uh, is probably most known for being a member of Brownstone, but all, or, and she also did a, a, a thing. It's crazy because I watched it last night. Me and the wife was up kind of late. And we were watching it. She she did a um, an episode on Martin where she was uh, Pam's cousin, and she was doing. Uh, she ended up trying out to get a record deal, and then dumped Martin after she got the deal. Uh, but she also was a background singer singer for Mariah Carey for a while. But anyway, she got on to tell her version of the story, uh, and some kind of way uh, said something that didn't sit well with the brat and so now they're beefing and then she said something about brats quote unquote uh lifetime partner well, i don't know wife whether they're married or whatever or not uh everybody knows how i feel about that but everybody has the right to live their life uh but that set brad off um and it's kind of out of character you know she'll say what she says but she's real like let live in that little type person let people do them type person and if she goes left it feels like she she feels you know kind of uh like you came for her uh and she's not shy about defending herself and she's definitely not shy about defending that that, that person that she, the person she's with uh, I've seen this on more than one occasion. You want to get her under her skin, say something about, I think her name is Judy, Judy, or something like that. Uh, but whatever it is, that got beef. Uh, I think that takes away from the story. Uh, I think that's something that could easily be worked out uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but that's where we tend to play our things out. And I think people have gotten so involved in that part of it because, again, we live vicariously through uh, celebrities. Um uh, we live vicariously through those we see to have achieved a certain level of success that if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we don't believe we can. So we live through them. We receive our triumphs through their triumphs. We deal with our downs and our lows through the things they go through. That's one of the reasons you had so many, you have so many people fighting ferociously for certain celebrities that you look at and you know damn well they're wrong, but you're fighting for them. You're going hard in the paint for them. Why? Because you relate to them. You relate to them at a level that you're not even willing to admit. Well, those are some things that I think that we really got to look at. We need to start creating situations where uh, people can relate to people who are successful, who may not be celebrity, celebrities. So not as many people will know them, but they still need to be highlighted. They still need to be celebrated. Uh, we need to celebrate the fact that we've got some pretty powerful uh, business owners, some pretty powerful uh, uh, scholars some pretty powerful inventors. Uh, we have a group of young people coming up that are killing the game in academics. Uh, those are things that we should uh, be celebrating and be looking at and be definitely teaching our younger kids uh, that you don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to run fast and jump high. You don't have to be a, a D-boy in the hood. You don't have to be you know, uh, an entertainer, a rapper, or actor, or comedian to live a good life, to be successful and be impactful. There's a place for you in this world where you can stand up and stand out and be exceptional and extraordinary. And we need to be teaching that to our children. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's a lure to celebrity. But what you'll find is they're human, just like you. They go through the same things you go through. And I can tell you, uh, in my experience is that that term more money more problems if you're not careful that becomes a reality real quick 
you know, yes, that's something sweet about not having to worry about how the bills are going to get paid. I ain't going to lie about that. There's something sweet about that. But there's also a bunch of other problems that comes, especially if you don't know how to manage and handle people. If you don't know how to protect your space, if you don't know how to say no, uh, it becomes a, a, a problem quick. But anyway, I just had to stop in. I want I was more excited about sharing the fact that just we've got these new ways that we're going to operate on this channel. Uh, it's still the black voice, but the ra the radio show and blog is going to be the black voice reloaded. Uh, the sort of hot topics of trending topics is going to be blazing heat. Uh, and then there's going to be the more scholarship research uh, stuff and, and history stuff and all of that. And that's going to be the teachers. And then we'll talk about whatever else. And then, you know, uh, that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. I'm excited about it. Still getting more sponsors and partners uh, to make this thing really, truly pop uh, and be able to expand reach and to really put in what it takes to reach more people. Uh, but I'm excited about it. Uh, but I, I just I just sit up because like people have been like, hey, what you know, what about this? I'm like, yeah, but uh, you know, this this is what I think about it. But I don't think it's anything to get on, on uh, online or on air and talk about. It. I think it's personal. But then when we started talking about uh, family uh, dysfunction, controlling spouses, uh, and so much else, it's, I started to say, okay, this is something I'm actually a pa actually passionate about. Uh, dysfunction in family, potential uh, spousal or partner abuse. Uh, you got to understand the second leading cause of death of black women between age of 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide. And, and then there's also intimate partner violence. Uh, that's a major role. Now, intimate partner violence, if we're going to be honest, goes both ways. The truth is, uh, statistics show that the black man and the black woman uh, commit violence toward each other in intimate partner relationships about equal, obviously because of the advantages in strength and size. The black man is far more dangerous and lethal with it than the black woman, but that's violence going on and we need to deal with where that's coming from. Uh, something that I've invested a lot of time in, something that we'll be talking about in the, in the coming months. Uh, and so those are just some of the things I'm excited about. There's a lot of work to be done. Also, uh, if there are topics that you want to talk about and discuss, definitely send them this way. Put them in the, uh, in the uh, comment section, but more importantly, email them uh, to the Odyssey Project or to uh, the Visionators Institute. Uh, we'll get so many different emails from so many different email accounts. Uh, email them directly to me at ceo at the Odyssey Project 21.top and then I'll get them and then we'll put them in the queue uh, again uh, once again I'm excited about this uh, don't forget the sponsors for this segment or this episode is inbox dollars where you can earn money uh, taking surveys opening emails surfing the web hey free to sign up check that out links in the box also living 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 uh, Living Green Supreme Foods. Again, links in the box. Check that out. On that note, Doc's about to check out. Still got a lot of work to do. Got to get to the gym and got to get home and get some stuff done at the house. That's how it goes. Got honeydews and all that stuff to get done. So I've got to go. But it's been great talking to you. Have a great day.